Soups just look healthy. I mean, really, it's mostly water. But ramen is in a class of its own. Japanese chefs have taken it to a whole new level. It's the first soup that went viral before that was even a thing. I mean, think about it. Deep fatty broth, roasted proteins, a little bit of veg, and some bouncy noodles. Absolutely delicious. So we're gonna go figure out how it's made properly, and then we're gonna come back in the kitchen and see if we can figure out a way to make it that's healthier for you. We all have those meals that we can't resist. We know that they're bad for our diet, but we can't help but indulge. Sometimes we wish that we could have the same treat without the regret. I'm Erwan Yusuf, I'm in love with Asian cuisine, and I used to overindulge quite a bit. I've drastically changed my life and health by taking charge of my diet, and I'm gonna see if I can lighten up these traditional favorites to give you the flavor without the guilt. This is Lightened Up. I love the energy of a ramen restaurant, especially here at Brown. Especially that, I love that, when they kind of greet people coming in and out. And the kitchen was extremely busy, so I didn't want to get in their way, so I just kind of waited for my beautiful bowl of ramen to be served. Here they make a tonkatsu broth ramen, which is deep, deep, porky broth. And when you see them put together, one, I love the efficiency of a ramen kitchen. Two, all the different elements that they put in it, which, Honestly, at the end of the day, is what probably deters a lot of people from making their own ramen at home just because it's so process heavy. So this tonkatsu ramen looks delicious and what they're known for is really thin, beautiful noodles. And you look at that, perfectly bouncy, cooked really quickly, nice and fresh. The broth, really kind of smooth, coats your whole mouth with fat. It's such a comforting recipe, but it is extremely daunting to do at home. So I'll try to do a simple version that's also just lighter for you. So let's go back to the kitchen after a couple more slurps and figure out if we can lighten this up. Let's be honest, if it's raining outside or if it's cold, this is a craving that can actually hit you weekly. But once I tell you what exactly is in it, you might want to rethink that strategy. When you're eating a tonkatsu ramen, one thing you'll realize is the broth actually sticks to your lips just like a cheap lipstick. I don't know if that works as an example, but that just means there's just an insane amount of fat that's in there. The ramen we actually tasted, and most of the ramens out there, will vary from 800 to 1,500 calories per bowl. And that's about 70 grams of carbs, probably more than 50 grams of fat that's in there. And the worst thing about it, it has 2,000 milligrams of sodium, which is more than what's recommended in a day. The first thing you wanna do, obviously, when you make ramen is the broth. People have their broths locked in safes in terms of the recipes. Some people share them, some people don't. One thing that's sure is that it takes a really, really long time to achieve a perfect ramen broth. Today, instead of pork, we're gonna be doing a light chicken ramen. We're using chicken bits here. We're using chicken bones, some chicken thighs, a little bit of meat, putting all that in a roasting pan with a bit of oil and some salt, chuck it into the oven, full whack at around 425 Fahrenheit. Keep it there for about 30 minutes. Then we're gonna reduce the temperature to about 375 Fahrenheit, add in some carrots and some scallions. That's gonna cook for 20 minutes. When it comes out, you'll see it. It sizzles, it's beautiful, it's brown, it's caramelized, it's delicious. Then we're gonna take two cups of water, throw it out into the roasting pan, make sure we're scraping the bottom to get all those beautiful burnt bits that have all the flavor that you want in your broth. That we put into a large stock pot, add in some aromatics, some ginger, some garlic, some kombu. Kombu is like the godfather of MSG. It's the most delicious thing ever. So if you can use it, use a lot of it. We cook that down for about three hours, high boil first, then bring it down to a simmer. Remember, while we're actually boiling, we're also skimming any additional fats or impurities that are coming to the surface. Once that's done, let it cool for a little bit, then we strain it. Remove all the discarded bits. If you have to strain it a couple of times, that's fine. Once you've got a clean liquid, we chuck that into the fridge. And this, my friends, is where your patience will be tested. You need to wait overnight or eight hours or 12 hours um, just to get that ramen broth where you need it so that once you take it out, shwing, I do my own sound effects, call me. What we can do is remove that top layer of fat that you see here. Keep it if you want to, um, or mix it in so it becomes creamy. But if you want to be extra healthy, go ahead and skim that off. So this is where we are picking up. First thing we want to do, a little bit of oil and some butter. 
What we're gonna use this for is to cook our chicken thigh. You wanna get like a large kind of chicken thigh that was deboned with a large piece of skin here. Cause we're then gonna be cooking this on one side, skin side down for about six to seven minutes, just to get it really nice and crispy. Season that with some salt. Switching from pork to chicken is already quite a healthy choice to make. You could use chicken breast. You wanna be extremely healthy about it, but honestly, me, I eat a lot of chicken and I get really bored very quickly with chicken breast. So I like to use chicken thighs. They're a little higher in fat, but honestly, chicken thigh is a happy medium for me. Once that's happening, I'm gonna go ahead and prep the veg. So some ginger and then some garlic. These are the types of ingredients, almost very, very low in calories that just adds so much flavor to food. So a little tip for you guys is just use a lot of aromatics, use a lot of spices, so that way your food doesn't turn out to be boring. You'll see how beautiful crispy it gets. <laughs> and then we're gonna place this in the oven for about 20 minutes until it's cooked through. Into our stock pot here, a little bit of oil, ginger and garlic, once it's softened out a little bit, add in your tamari. Tamari is a gluten-free option if you're trying to stay away from gluten but still want some soy sauce. Then we're gonna add in some miso. This is really where we start building flavor. Once that's done, take your broth, place it in our pot here, dump the mixture in. We're gonna bring that to a boil, then to a simmer, and leave it for 10 minutes. While that's happening, prepare some hot water that you're gonna bring to a boil for the eggs. We're gonna add just a little bit of mushrooms in there. These are shiitake mushrooms. And that's gonna cook down for an additional, maybe five, 10 minutes, and then you should be good to go. Just taste it as you go, and once it's intense and the flavor is where you want it to be, then you should be all right. For this particular recipe, we're using some brown rice ramen noodles. That's gonna cook down really quickly, so I'm gonna get my chicken ready. You'll see they've got this beautiful golden crust on it. Nice and crispy. Chop it up. That goes into the bowl. Boom! That looks beautiful. To this, we add our broth. Place our chicken on there. That should be a perfect gooey center. To that, we add some spring onions, a little bit of sesame seeds, I don't know about you guys, but this makes me so hungry. Let's give it a taste. Nice and bouncy. That piece of chicken cooks on one side. Absolutely tender and that skin just kind of just mm, makes the dish so delicious. It's deep, flavorful and really creamy. And you know what's great about this bowl of ramen? It actually comes down to 526 calories only proportion, and you're looking at about half the amount of sodium that's in there. Obviously, if you compare to this to the original one, it'll be very hard to compare both because we're trying to make a healthier version of something. So when I do that, I try not to compare it to the original. But at the end of the day, you need to enjoy the food that you like, and you need to find ways that sustainable for you, that fits your diet, fits your lifestyle, fits your cravings. And this bowl for me, if I'm hankering for a really piping hot bowl of ramen, this works just fine. It's a good trade-off, and I know you guys are gonna like it. So this is Lightened Up, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.